be glad. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will what? Rejoice, hallelujah, and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Certainly, we'd like to welcome everyone to this wonderful worship experience right here at the Greater Allen AME Cathedral of New York. For those that are in person, we say welcome, welcome, welcome. We hope and pray that you came with your dancing shoes, amen, and praising hands today. And for those that are watching virtually, we say good morning to you. So glad that you woke up bright and early this morning to tune in for worship. Come on, let's go before the Lord in prayer. God, we honor your presence in this house. Indeed, we are entering your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. Father, we pray for an outpour of your spirit in this house today. Lord, that you would anoint every worshiper that enters through these doors, every psalmist, every praise singer, every dancer, everyone that's under the sound of my voice. Father, we've come to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We have come believing, Lord God, that salvation will flood this house, that deliverance will flood the house, that miracles, signs, and wonders will happen, that you will speak to our hearts, oh God, and liberate our souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, if you're in agreement, tell God thank you. Hallelujah and amen. Come on, let's enter into worship right now. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, is anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? If you're excited to be here, can you just open up your mouth and shout hallelujah in the sanctuary? Come on, that's good for me, but we're talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The one that woke us up this morning. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. The one who started us on our way. Come on, give him glory all over the room. Come on, all over the balcony on the floor. Why don't you lift up your voice in praise? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, I came to rejoice this morning. Come on. Tell somebody else, say, I came to rejoice this morning. If you have a praise, look at this, why don't you bless the Lord with us? Come on, right here, make it big, come on. Say, I will bless the Lord. Come on, you sound good. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul.
grace and his mercy covering me every single every single day every single hour God's hand is still on my life I need some believers to lift it up in the room come on call on the name of Jesus Hallelujah! praise the Lord greater Allen come on all over this room would you open your mouth and give God a great shout of praise yeah, no, I said give him a great shout of praise. Can I ask you one question? What's his name this morning? No, I said what's his name this morning? One more time, somebody open your mouth and shout Jesus. Right here, everybody clap, clap, clap your hands. Up. Here we go. Who is by the name of the Lord? Who is worthy? Who is worthy of all praise to His name? Magnify the name of the Lord. Magnify the name of the Lord. Give Him glory. Give Him glory and all praise because He's great. Great. Say so I can come. I can come. When, when I need. When I need him. He's my He's friend. My Right there, everybody clap your hands. Come on. Somebody put a praise in the atmosphere today. Take it down there. Come on, Gallon, help me sing it. We say glorify the name of the Lord. Who is worthy? Magnify the name of the Lord. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Jesus. 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 Let's do it one more time. Oh, Jesus. 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 That's not one dream like the Lord. Jesus. No. Not one. No. Not one. Jesus. 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 Put those hands together. Jesus, with the same spirit of praise and celebration, we go to God in prayer together. We believe that there is a name above heaven. We believe that there is a name above the earth, beneath, above beneath the earth. We believe that there is no other name more powerful than the name of Jesus. And this is the great name that we call upon today. Come on, we've got great friends. We've got great family members. We've got some numbers in our phone we can call. But there's nothing like calling on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We go to God in prayer with faith, believing. Hallelujah. That when we pray, when we call on him, he hears us. And if we ask according to his will, he says it is ours. Father, we thank you so much today for your great name, Jesus. We thank you for the strong tower that we can run into and find safety. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, that you have been highly exalted. 
and given a name above every other name. You said at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess. So Father, even right now, we echo the name of Jesus. We echo it in this room. We echo the name of Jesus, believing that you're going out to heal, believing that you are going out to deliver, believing that your spirit is being released, hallelujah, to do great exploits in our life. We thank you and we call on your great name, Jesus, believing that angels are being dispatched at your charge to watch over, to minister to, to accomplish everything, oh God, that you have set, that you have planned. Father, we call on the name of Jesus. We believe, Father, hallelujah, that we are your sons and daughters, that we are joint heirs with Christ and we are heirs of the Father. So we stand, oh God, in expectation. We stand in receipt of your promise, your promise to heal, your promise to save, your promise to rescue, your promise to recover, your promise to cover and to keep us. Father, we thank you for that name, Jesus. It is a promise. Oh God, it is a a confirmation. Hallelujah, that you are with us, Lord. And we thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, oh God, today for those who are sick. We pray for those who are shut in, Father. We pray that you would minister to them at their point of need. Father, we pray for those in this room who have pressed their way in spite of sickness, in spite of pain, in spite of fatigue. And Father, we pronounce healing in this place. We praise you in advance, Father, that you are healing arthritis, that you are healing aches and pains. We praise you in advance, Father, that right here in your presence, oh God, infirmity is dissipating. We praise you in advance, oh God, believing, hallelujah, that the prayer of faith is doing what it was said to do. It is healing the sick. We thank you, oh God, for it in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray for those, oh God, who are struggling in the hour of bereavement. We pray, oh God, for those who are heavy hearted this morning, for those with their heads low, for those, oh God, who may be confused, who may be having a hard time dealing with difficult decisions. We pray that you would minister to them, Father, minister to their families, help to guide them and to lead them, bring clarity, oh God, to their mind and to their soul. We pray, oh God, that you would be a comforter. You would remind them that you are near to the brokenhearted. And Father, we celebrate you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, all of God's people, one more time. Shout hallelujah, hallelujah, and amen. All over this sanctuary, Greater Allen, can you lift up your hands to our God? And for a moment, can we fill this room with worship? Come on, all over the sanctuary. Can you open your mouth and worship our Lord? Can you worship the Christ? Come on, the great I am. Come on, I don't hear a sound. Come on. Lift up a sound to worship. We love you, Jesus. Stay right there. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Come on, lift up those hands in this sanctuary. Glory to Jesus. You know the song that says like this. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Of your presence in this room. See that in majesty. You are the reason, King. Come on, one voice, everybody sing. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. Come on. Come on, that's it. Sing, you've won the victory. All over the sanctuary, come on, let's raise it. Hallelujah. You have won it all. Come on, let's go out. Death could not hold. 
Come on, tell them you are the risen king, everyone. Yeah, that's it. And he's seated in majesty. Come on, lift it now. You are the risen. Lift those voices and say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the big. Come on, can you sing that from your spirit? We say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all. Let's go. Sing down. Seated in majesty. Oh God, you are my risen king. Yes, 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 we're not going to die. You are the risen king. Like you see. Voice, everybody say it. You came from heaven to show us all from the earth to the throne. From the earth to my death, you pay from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the grave. Lord, we lift your name. Lord, I lift your name. You came from heaven to earth. Show us all from the earth to the cross. From the earth to the cross, you paid all of my debts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, lift your name. One more time, say, You came from heaven to earth.
room, lift up your voice and give our God a great shout of praise. Give him a great shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Continue to give God praise. I wonder would you just stand on your feet and lift your hands and begin to exalt the Lord. If you're glad to be in the land of the living today, if you're grateful that the blood yet runs warm in your veins, if you're grateful that you've been through dangers, toils, and snares, but you've been kept by the amazing grace of God, I wonder would you just begin to thank God. Everybody has something to thank God for. Hallelujah, Jesus. And certainly we thank you for sending Jesus. He came from heaven to earth to show the way. Hallelujah. He came from heaven to earth to show the way. Won't you honor him today? Won't you lift his name? Won't you lift his name? Won't you lift his name? Somebody shout hallelujah. Everybody shout glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. God, we give you praise today. We give you praise today. From the grave. Great. Now, come on, let's put our hands together in this place and give God praise. Put your hands together and give God praise. For truly, this is the Lord's day, this seventh day of April in the year 2024. You may go to your seats. We greet you with the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And certainly for those of you who are viewing online, we welcome you. And we, of course, are excited to see those of you who have gathered in the sanctuary on this Sunday after Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Listen, if there are any visitors here, won't you please stand and remain standing? We just like to greet you. We'd like to give you a hearty Allen welcome. God bless you, my brothers and my sisters. We're so grateful that you chose to worship with us today. Please remain standing. And let us just say that if you don't have a church home, please consider Allen. And if you do, amen, we say thank God and please take our greetings back to your church family. Now, Allen family, won't you turn and greet those who are standing around you, wave at them, bump, give them a fist bump, shake their hands, and let them know how happy we are that they are here with us on today. The coffee hour is being hosted by stewardess board number three, and certainly we hope that you will allow them to serve you as you go down to purchase uh, the good food that they have prepared. The communications ministry is looking for a few good volunteers, amen. They will have a, um, a, a meeting, a virtual meeting on Tuesday, April 9th at 7 o'clock p.m. via Zoom. Uh, if you are interested in volunteering as you go, as we're going through uh, archives uh, of the years gone by, uh, those who signed up to be to be volunteers, you are able to, uh, you should have received an email with a Zoom link. If you are interested, uh, please, uh, or if you didn't receive it, please call the church office and we would certainly uh, hook you up because they need uh, some help. Let the people of God say amen. We continue with our virtual Bible study, women's Bible study tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m., 7 o'clock p.m., the Women's Virtual Bible Study tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. Won't you join us for Bible study? Uh, the Design for Discipleship uh, Spring Series has begun. Join us on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. through uh, from this week through June 27th. 
learn what it means to be a Christian and how to make a difference in the world. You may register for discipleship online, amen, at www.allencathedral.org, D-F-D, Design for Discipleship, amen. Won't you please let it do that? We are excited. Ladies, we are going to conference this week. <laughs> Amen. Thursday through Saturday, we will gather at the Stanford Marriott Hotel. Now, let me just say this. The uh, Stanford Marriott Hotel can only hold 900 people, and we have 900 people registered. So for those of you who were perhaps planning uh, to drop in for our worship experiences. I just need you to know the evening services, unfortunately, are not open to the public because there are no seats available. Let the people of God say amen. And so uh, there is a virtual offering, a virtual option that would allow you to stream most of the conference uh, and you can see those registration details on our church website. Only registered women will be permitted to attend the evening service, but you can view it on the website for a nominal fee. Amen. Uh, we are excited. Next week we will uh, gather here on this uh, on the uh, Sunday following conference. Bishop Carolyn Showell and Reverend Manita Weems will be our preachers for the day. And then, of course, our cancer support ministry would have you know that there will be a van in uh, here at the church on Tuesday, April 23rd to offer mammographies, mammograms to those women who need it. And if you're interested, won't you please, amen, uh, call the, contact the church office. You can register in the narthex today. If you do, and if you're viewing, please call the church office so you can register. You can't just show up. We need you to register. Uh, we're excited. The women's ministry is hosting an afternoon tea party. Amen. That doesn't sound, you all don't sound very excited about that. <laughs> you know, I went to London earlier, well, last year, and I, for the first time in my life, I had tea, uh, you know, afternoon tea, and it was such a, an exhilarating experience <laughs> that we decided we want to spill the tea here at Allen. And so that is the theme, spilling the tea, and the theme uh, with the mentor and the mentee. Okay, so who is the mentee that is going to be spilling the tea with me? Reverend Eddie Jordan. <laughs> Amen, so that ought to be interesting. Won't you join us on Saturday, April 26th? We will begin the tea at 3 o'clock p.m. Amen. 3 o'clock p.m. at the Cathedral Banquet Hall. Now, ladies, they have on this paper that you should uh, wear fascinators. That's them. That's not me. <laughs> I just want you to know. But they want you to come in their afternoon, in your afternoon tea attire. Amen. With your hats and your fascinators. Tickets are available for purchase today, uh, uh, and you can certainly purchase them online at www.allencathedral.org. Okay, it's a whole lot going on. The Security Ministry Brunch is going to be held on Saturday, May 4th at 1230 p.m. here in the Cathedral Banquet Hall. They are selling tickets on the church website. Uh, please join them as they honor, amen, their very own pastor, Reverend Elaine Flake, amen. We're looking forward to that. And then... The Legacy Luncheon will take place. We're selling tickets 
today. Tickets are, oh no, they're only available online. And so, ladies, gentlemen, please join us for our Legacy Luncheon to be held May 18th at the Floral Terrace at 12 o'clock noon. We hope that you will join us there, and we are certainly looking forward to that. Now, Leslie, the Save the Date for the Ignite Youth Conference uh, that will be held uh, June 30th through July 5th. Uh, parents, if you have children between the ages of 9 and 17, there is a virtual interest meeting to be held this week, April 10th, uh, at, or Monday, April 15th at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, I don't know what the details are. I'm assuming that you can get the information on the church website. It is giving time at the cathedral. Amen. We are so excited that God continues to bless us and God continues to uh, grant us opportunities for more. Somebody say more. We are not in uh, slow down mode. We are in step it up mode. Let the people of God say amen. And so we hope that you understand the importance of maintaining the ministry and maintaining the work that God has called us to do. Let the people of God say amen. And so we pray that you will continue to sow into this uh, vineyard so into this, I believe it's good soil, and I need we need you to certainly uh, partner with us as we continue to do the work of the Lord in this community, as we continue to do outreach, as we continue to maintain this church, as we continue, amen, to serve the Lord with excellence. We need you to do what we, uh, what, what what worship calls us to do, and that is to sacrifice uh, unto the Lord. So won't you give and give generously on today? For those of you who are viewing, the giving instructions are on the screen. And for those of you who are here, if you're not giving electronically, please prepare your gifts now, and uh, someone will be by the doors, the offices will be by the doors to uh, receive your gifts as you depart from worship. Now, if you are mailing your gifts in, for those of you who are viewing, uh, you can mail them this week if you don't do electronic giving to the Greater Allen Cathedral, 110-31 Floyd H. Flake Boulevard, amen, formerly Merrick Boulevard, Jamaica, New York. Let the people of God say amen and amen.
the Lord. Don't you agree? Somebody shout amen. 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 Let's put our hands together and thank God for our music ministry. Thank God for this worship experience. Amen. Before I call your attention to the scripture, I just do need to make a point of clarity. Next Sunday is our conference culmination, but not women's culmination. So don't, you don't have to wear your white next week. It's the fourth Sunday in this month that we will culminate uh, our women's season. We're just going to have guest preachers next week, but we will also have a guest preacher. Reverend Shalika Fambe will be here uh, for the fourth Sunday's culmination. Let the people of God say amen. On this Sunday after Resurrection Sunday, won't you turn your attention to Daniel? I'm going back to the Old Testament, chapter 5. 
we're going to begin reading at verse 1. This is the word of the Lord. King Belshazzar gave a banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. While Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and his nobles, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. <clears throat> so they brought the gold goblets that they had taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem. And the king and his nobles and his wives and his concubines drank from them. As they drank the wine, they praised the gods of gold, silver, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Suddenly, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. His face turned pale, and he was so frightened that his legs became weak and his knees were knocking. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. Amen. His knees were knocking. A sermon topic for this morning you need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. Amen. My sisters and brothers, one of the things that characterizes the human experience is our ongoing need to escape this world's darkness. And we need to escape darkness because in this life, we need to have clarity. We need to have an awareness of all of the forces that are at work around us and in us. Forces that have the potential to defeat, destroy, and distance us from the truths of God. Darkness is not a good place to live. Darkness is that reality that is void of God's life and God's truth. Darkness is that space that is filled with mental and emotional traps, traps that will negate or certainly impact our spiritual growth and our relationship with God. Darkness is that, is that reality that is filled with confusion and, and false perceptions. It is filled with lies and deception and the tendency to profane the sacred. Darkness is that place that is void of spiritual insight. It is void of God's will and the glory of his presence. And the truth is, my brothers and sisters, while, we, while those who do not acknowledge God, we say are living in darkness. There are many believers walking in darkness, but they have no idea that they are really in trouble. Darkness is one of the ways to God provided we see it as leading to the light. To stay in darkness is to experience the death of our souls. And so we do everything we can to escape the dark. Now, Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there is a way that appears to be right but in the end, it leads to destruction. That verse recorded in Proverbs asserts a sad reality. Humanity often forms opinions about things, about people, and about God. And many of those opinions uh, that they form, many of those attitudes that they have about the things of God, can surely lead 
to darkness and death. There are so many in this world who have embraced ideas, ideals, opinions, and standards that are far from God's character, uh, far from God's commandment, but they think is right. They've decided that it makes sense. It makes sense to them. And so we have many in the kingdom who are so convinced that they are right that they boldly refuse to change or even consider the possibility that they may be wrong. They know what the Bible says, but they have decided they can't take that. They don't care what the Bible says. They don't even consider trying to align with the character, the will, and the word of God. Their determination is to hold fast to their conviction, even if it kills them. My brothers and sisters, on this day, we all need to be clear that there should be a sense of urgency in the hearts and the minds of all Christians, amen, all church members, uh, uh, we've got to understand that we need to pay attention and see how desperately the world needs Christ, how desperately the saints of God need Christ, how desperately the church needs Christ. See, there's a lot going on. Pay attention, gun violence is getting worse every day. Far too many of our youth are being shot down, amen, and becoming captive to their own bad decisions to follow bad examples. The world needs the saints of God to be the church. We have a mean-spirited Congress who would rather shut down the nation than to walk in the spirit of healthy compromise. We have a legal system that continues to build its economy by intentionally incarcerating large numbers of inmates of color arresting unfairly and sentencing harshly, sex trafficking and and gun sales and family disruptions are destroying the minds and bodies of our people. Large numbers of Americans are suffocating under the weight of escalating costs and diminishing funds. Wars all across the land, lives being lost needlessly, and world leaders on ego trips that are desecrating their very own people. God knows we need the power of God to be manifested across this nation. So we've got to pay attention to who we are, who we are becoming, and what God is saying to us in this season. Saints, we must understand that we need to be Christians who are unapologetically Christian. And we surely need the church to be the church. This is not a praise posse, not a social club. This is not an insular organization that you have to uh, be hazed to enter. Understand this, uh, we are the church of the true and living God, so we must be God's voice in the land, and we have got to be the force that helps to change the world. The world needs the church to be the church, a countercultural force that changes lives, that transforms communities, and that offers the real Jesus to those who need him. We must give our attention to stretching our own souls toward God and work to dispelling the darkness in our lives so that we can introduce the light of Christ to others. Somebody say good, uh, uh, amen. 
And the good news is that we can have as much of God as we want if we open the door, if we make room for God. Amen. You can have as much of his power as you want. You can have as much of his wisdom as you want. But we've got to make room to let him be God. It's sad that statistics show that believers are losing their influence in the world. Christians are losing their influence in the world because more and more we have become more committed to blending in with everybody than we are to standing out by standing up for Jesus. And while it would be easy to blame the secular culture, the failing schools and the godless music and the media industries for what is happening in our nation, we've got to pay attention. We have to look at the fact that believers have become confused about their mission and their purpose in the world and many have not embraced what it really means to be Christian. Church, it is unfortunate, but the reality is that we have many in the church who are churched, but not changed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Many of us have let our own self-centered desires move us away from God. We do not, there are those who will not do the will of God because their will is the gauge by which they live. They rush to service on Sunday, but there are many who do not really think about what it means to be one who declares that they follow Jesus. There are many in the church who are attached to their uh, uh, appearance more than and 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 attached to their uh, attached to people approval and and attached to making accomplishments and they could care less or they have not uh, made the effort to be attached to God and there are many in the church who are guilty of idol worship and they don't even know it. The idols of sex, the idols of shacking, the idols of adultery, money and credit card debt, drugs, consumerism. All of these idols have been erected in the lives of people who uh, call themselves Christian. And even though they claim they're Christian, their perspective on sin and morality has been defined by society, has been defined by friends, and not by the biblical text. And there are too many of us in the kingdom who are not paying attention to who we are, who we are becoming, and how we are living. Help us, Holy Ghost. We're not paying attention to how we are spending our time or how we should be spending our time. How uh, We're not paying attention to our conversations or uh, our relationships, uh, our activities or our lifestyles. It's, it has become an anything goes uh, 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 society. And sadly, we have men and women who serve in church who serve in ministry, speak in tongues as the Spirit gives them utterance, worship with zeal, but they have not really opened themselves up to the true saving power of Jesus Christ. And you know this because they lead double lives. Amen. They are one way in church and another way out of the church. And they are resistant to positive change that should come about when you are really a true, true Christian. Remember what Paul says in the first chapter of his letter to the church at Galatia. He says, I am astonished 
that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and you are turning to a different gospel, which is really not a gospel at all. And the thing that is perfectly clear is that when we create a different gospel, amen, people cannot be saved. When we create a different gospel, lives will be destroyed. Families will be disrupted. Hallelujah. When we try, different gospels have little to do with the Jesus who overcame death on the cross and, 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 and uh, the Jesus who, who was resurrected and declared that all power was in his hands. A, a different gospel has has little to do with striving toward holiness. Uh, uh, different gospels justify getting high and polluting bodies and excessive alcohol intake. Different gospels uh, are gospels of entitlement that says you can do whatever you want. Uh, different gospels produce believers that don't know where they're going because they don't know the God that they profess to serve. And this different gospel has resulted in pastors and leaders and church members who are so full of themselves that they cannot be faithful. They're flashy but not faithful. Fickle instead of faithful. Foul mouthed instead of faithful. Folks who are, uh, who are fussy, but they're not faithful. There is only one gospel. Somebody say one. There is only one gospel, and none of us have God's permission to tamper with the gospel. There is only one gospel that saves. There is only one gospel that sanctifies. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So pay attention to church, to what's going on around us. Let's pay attention to what is going on in us and determine how we are going to live in this hour. If you really have faith, you will not be content to wallow in your humanity or to flaunt your sin or have a strong attachment to the culture in which we live. If you really have faith, that means that you will find, we will find our ultimate satisfaction in Jesus Christ. There is a call going out this morning, the call to walk with God. And it's not a call to a public spiritual show off, but it is a call, amen, to be a private spiritual renegade. And that in other words, what culture says cannot influence us. The call that is on our lives is a call from the Lord to publicly and personally embrace biblical standards and to be his partners in a changing world. Uh, and we ought to throw our hands up right now and declare, Lord, I know it's not enough to be churched. Uh, I want to be changed. I, I want to be transformed. I, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, I want to pay attention. Uh, to what's going on in me so that I can give my flaws and my frailties over to you so that I can be, hallelujah, uh, transformed by the renewing of my mind. We are called in this hour to embrace radically different standards from the culture in which we live. Ah, uh, yes, Lord. And we are being called to live lives of sacrifice. We're being called to total surrender. I know you all don't like this. Total transformation. And I believe that time is winding down. And church, we cannot be caught sleeping. The handwriting is on the wall. 
pay attention to what the Lord is saying. I believe the Lord is not pleased with the trajectory of so much of the modern church and is calling us to rise up and move away from ignoring the totality of who God is. We cannot dismiss the sacred. We cannot profane the name Christianity, but we have got to live with God in mind and we must not be tainted by the unrelenting forces that have been released in this world to keep us away from God and to keep us away from the will of God. Preach Elaine Flake. And as we look <laughs> Hallelujah. Pay attention. Shake somebody's hand and declare we got to pay attention. Let's look at the text that we read today. We find that Belshazzar was now king of Babylon. The Bible says he was throwing a big party for uh, over 1,000 of his nobles. The wine was flowing. It got so good to the king that he seemingly out of the blue called for his servants to bring him the gold and silver cups that his forefather Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple in Jerusalem when he captured the Israelites over 60 years before. Now these golden goblets were sacred to the Jewish people, but he had possession of these goblets and he decided that he wanted that he wanted he uh, him and his wives and 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 his guests to drink from the sacred uh, receptacles, amen, of the uh, God of Israel. Now this church was an open act of defiance. It was an act of open defiance on the part of the king. For he obviously knew that these articles were sacred to the Israelites, those who believed in God. But tell your neighbor, he did not care. He was feeling his oats. He was feeling invincible now because after all, he was king. He was ruler of one of the greatest nations of that time. And he obviously had no fear of God. Now, when I say that he had no fear of God, God, I mean, too, that he did not revere or honor God, and he did not fear the consequences of, the, uh, uh, of defying God or desecrating the holy. He thought that his idols were greater than uh, Yahweh, and so uh, he did not uh, hesitate to do what he did. I guess he had forgotten his history. I guess he had forgotten how God had humbled his grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar, when his ego got out of control. I guess he had forgotten how for seven years, uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar uh, lost his mind and was wandering around like an animal with the animals. Uh, see, but we've got to remember uh, when power goes to your head, you tend to forget the lessons that you should have learned. He should have remembered his grandfather, but he, he was drunk. He was inebriated with his own sense of power. Because when power goes to your head, you will begin to defy social rules, religious codes, and even God himself. We have seen it in our Congress. We have seen it in other areas of the political arena. Amen. We've seen it in other lands. When power goes to your head, men and women begin to kill, steal, and destroy. There are no restrictions because after all, they feel that rules don't apply to them. And so when Israel's religious receptacles were brought to the king Belshazzar, he filled them with wine 
and distributed them to his guests. Next, while drinking from the goblets from the temple of the Lord, they proceeded to worship their idol gods, the gods of gold and silver, the gods of bronze and stone. They, they were insulting the God of Israel by making a mockery of sacred things. Belshazzar did not realize that the golden cups were sacred as unto the Lord. They had been set apart by God. And when they were desecrated, Lord have mercy, the Lord God had to get the king's attention. Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you? I got some witnesses here today that will say that when you're doing wrong and when you're going in the wrong direction, God will get your attention. Amen. He will turn you around. He will let you know that he is not pleased. And so, suddenly, God began to move. And all of the revelry uh, rev and, 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 and all of the party came to an end. And fear and amazement filled the banquet hall. There, says the text, appeared a hand without a body. Amen. Uh, uh, there were fingers uh, on the hand, but there was no body attached to the hand. And the fingers began to write on the wall. All the people watched as the hand wrote four words on the wall. Now it terrified the folk who were in the room. The party and stop, the music stop, and the Bible says that all the guests, including the king, all the people, including the king, were overcome with fear. In fact, the king was so, was so afraid that his knees began to tremble. And the Bible uh, uh, historians say that he collapsed to the floor. I think he knew that this handwriting on the wall was a clear indication that judgment had come to his house. See, when the sacred is not respected, there will be times when we see drastic divine intervention. Say amen, somebody. The, the, uh, 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 the king knew that God was speaking and that he could not ignore God any longer. And he was ready to pay attention, but it might have been too late. He, 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 he started scurrying around Reverend Wyatt to see who he could find to interpret the four words that were written. Amen. But before I go on, let me say this. Uh, see, what the king did not even understand is that while he was busy partying, entertaining, and being the quintessential host, uh, uh, the historian said it was a real orgy. Amen. And while he was all caught up in that, history also tells us that his enemies, the Persians, were outside the city wall getting ready to invade and conquer his kingdom. Amen. He was just a few hours away from seeing his nation be besieged by the Persians. While he was having a drunken orgy, his nation was about to come under siege. He thought that the walls of his city was invincible, were invincible. He thought he was invincible, and he stopped paying attention to what was going on on around him. See, the king uh, didn't understand what was written, and so he sent for advisors and astrologers and, and folk that he thought could interpret what was written. Uh, 
and his fear and his anxiety grew because no one could read the message. Finally, the queen mother came in and recommended that he send for Daniel. Daniel was a Jewish man who was a follower of Yahweh. And if you read the, the, the book of Daniel, you will see that he had been promoted to be a member of the royal co court simply because he uh, God had, had, had anointed him for success. And the Bible says that the king sent for Daniel. He offered him money to give him the mean, uh, 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 yeah, the meaning of the four words. Uh, but Daniel refused the money, uh, and he said, "I don't sell prophecies." <laughs> But I will give you the word, amen, amen. And 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 he began to refer. He, he, you know, he said, uh, "You should have learned from your granddaddy that God does not play." Because remember, when he refused to acknowledge God, amen, uh, he had, and because he had mistreated many people and did not execute justice like he should have, he uh, experienced a fall from a, a, a grace. And the same thing is about to happen to you, King Belshazzar, amen. And so he, he began to uh, uh, interpret the four words that were written. Now, what were the four words? I'm glad you asked. The first word and the second word were the same. Mene, mene, M-E-N-E, M-E-N-E, look in your Bible, amen. The, uh, and then the third word was tekel, and the, and the uh, fourth word was perez. Now, if you look at M-E-N-E, -N -E, I meant to put it on the screen, M-E-N-E, -N -E, mene, that means numbered. That word means numbered. And so the message was, King, your days are numbered. Your reign is about to come to an end. And he wrote it twice because he wanted to emphasize the certainty that it was gonna happen. His days were measured, his days were numbered, his days were counted, God was getting ready to move. And now the second word, tekel, T-E-K-E-L means weighed. Now what that means is you have Way been weighed against the holy God, and you have come up lacking. You have ignored God, and you have chosen to entertain earthly pleasures. Hence, when the when weighed on the scales of righteousness, Amen. You are a failure, and so something's about to happen. And then the, the fourth word was Perez, and that word means divided. In other words, Belshazzar, your kingdom is not only about to fall, but it's going to be divided and given to your enemies. Amen. Daniel pronounced doom, amen, and the Bible says, as I hurry on, that that very night, Belshazzar lost his life at the hand of the enemies. His time had run out. But I've got good news today. For us, we still got time to get it right. Get right with God and do it now. Understand this, everybody listen to me. Life in God is a sacred space. Life in God. We are in God and God in us. That is a sacred space. And the Lord is calling us today to honor, to pay attention 
to who God is, to who we are, and how we are living, how we are moving in this world. And the word of the Lord to us is that we cannot defile the sacred things of God with words and behaviors, help us, Holy Ghost, and thoughts that dishonor the God who lives in us. We are always standing on holy ground. You ain't got to be in church to understand the holiness of God. Ah, uh, yes, and so today we rebuke spiritual rebellion. We rebuke spiritual blindness and spiritual deafness and distorted realities. We rebuke different gospels that are taking us down the wrong path. God help us today to pay attention to the state of our souls lest we fall as Belshazzar did or lest we fall into any form of idolatry. Ah, be king on the throne of our hearts. God, we ask you today to fill us with the Holy Spirit and make us conscious of our frailties so that we can, hallelujah, live your life of truth. Is there anybody in here who is looking to live God's truth? Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, we ask God to fill us with the Holy Ghost and to make us aware of anything in us that needs to change. We want to be his representatives in the world. Uh, is there anybody who will jump up on your feet right now and lift your hands and say power Power of God fall on me. Uh, I understand that God sets standards. Uh, nothing in creation is hidden from God. We know that God knows us. Uh, and so we ask God to show us. Ah, uh, uh, thank you, Jesus. How he wants us to move in the world from today forward. Uh, somebody say, show me, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Uh, can you, church, join me and declare, I want to see God. Uh, I want to hear God. Uh, I want to be led by God. Uh, are you willing to be sold out for Christ? Uh, are you willing, hallelujah, to stand on holy ground? We cannot lose our sense of the sacred. And one of the primary signs that we have lost our sense of sacred if we live a life that says anything goes, if our conversations are not holy, if the words that we utter are not holy, if our habits are not holy, if we have addictions, Lord have mercy, that are certainly corrupting our holiness. We need the Lord to be God in our midst. Come on, lift your hands and let's worship the Lord and let this worship Thank you, Jesus. Be a declaration to yourself, to the enemy, and to the world that there is no God like my God. And I want him to be the first and the foremost force in my life. Lift your hands and worship the Lord. Exalt him and declare, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will not defile the sacred things. I will not be guilty of trying to formulate a, a different gospel. <laughs> come on, come on. Power of God fall on us. So that we are those who honor you in all that we do. Power of God fall on us. Lift your hands. Power of God fall on us. Hallelujah, so that the world can see the truth of God in us. Power of God fall on us. Dethrone every idol that has been erected in our lives. Dethrone pride and arrogance and the unwillingness to change. God, we ask you to take it from us today in the name of Jesus. You are our God. We follow your word. We follow your leading. We do not let culture dictate our lives 
lifestyles, but rather we pray that the word of God would fill us, that the word of God uh, will change us, that the word of God will shape us, the word of God will give us the mind of Christ, give us the mind of Christ today, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus. We reject every lie that has been spoken over us. We reject every lie that has been told to us. We reject every lie that is circulating in culture. And we decree and declare that we belong to God. And we are seeking first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness. That is our story. That is our declaration. Fall on us. Power of the true and living God. Fall on us. We receive your truth. Power of God fall on us. Cleanse us today. Transform our minds. We renounce flesh thoughts and we receive the thoughts that come from those who have faith in the true and living God. Power of God fall on us. Truth of God lead us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus Christ to save us. We receive him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Breathe on us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Shower down your power. Shower down your glory.
It is our prayer that we will never desecrate or defile the sacredness of the God that we serve. Lord, help us to pay attention and to be aware, to be aware and to be willing to be changed. Listen, the door of the church is open. Is there one here today who understands the necessity of becoming one with God? Come on, we're gonna sing and we need you to start walking this way. The Lord is calling you today specifically to a different place and a different level of living. Come on, the Lord is calling us all, but there's somebody in this sanctuary. You can feel the Lord tugging on your heart as you understand that there is a change that needs to be made. That the route, the path that you're traveling is not leading you to God, but it's leading you away from God. And you need to come today. Come on, put your hands together because they're coming. Everyone should be on a path that is leading us to God and not leading us to the addictions and leading us to drugs and leading us to lifestyles that are antithetical to the word of God. Come on, the Lord is calling you. The Lord is waiting on you. And because the Lord is waiting, we are waiting. Somebody needs to start walking right now. Come on, come on. God bless you, my brothers. God bless you, my sisters. Come on, come on, come on. God bless you. Be sure, be very sure that you're in the right place at the right time. And know that God, arms are open to receive you. Come on, they're still coming. Come on, upstairs in the balcony. We'll wait for you. Bless the name of the Lord. We thank God for his presence, which is raining down upon us even right now. Come on, I want us to unite in prayer. 
for those who are at this altar and even for those that have yet to come. But you feel the tug on your heart and on, on your spirit to come. It's not too late. Come on. Come on. Make the devil out to be the liar that he already is. Come on. Some of you feel like you're being pulled right back to your seat. Uh-uh. Come on, step on out in faith and believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to pray right now. And everyone that's at this altar and even for those in the house, we're going to pray the prayer of salvation. Father, we admit that we have sinned and fallen short of your glory. We believe that Jesus lived, that he performed miracles, that he lived the perfect life, that he died on the cross for all of my sins, past, present, and future. We accept and receive Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior right now. Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, lead me. Holy Spirit, guide me for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, if you believe that in your heart, you confess it with your mouth. Come on, declare right now, I am saved. Hallelujah, I'm saved. For those that are at the altar, we're going to encourage you to go out of these doors to your right, to my left. If you desire to give your life to Jesus Christ, amen. Listen, for those that have come and desire to give their life to Jesus or to unite with our church family, we're going to let you out of here in just a second, but we want you to receive Holy Communion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Come on, we're going to prepare our hearts and minds right now for Holy Communion. How many of you know we need to take time when we are offering Christ? Amen. Amen. Even as the Holy Spirit does his work, we don't want to rush Holy Spirit to save someone, to heal someone, and to deliver someone. Amen. As our officers are coming and our ministers, amen, to serve at this time, we're going to pray our prayer of general confession. The words would be on your screen. I'm going to give the officers a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Come on, let's proclaim together our prayer of general confession. Almighty God. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, let us say together, Amen. The Bible declares that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take, drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Receive your elements.
to the top. Everyone say the blood, the blood that Jesus, that Jesus shed. Sing way back on Calvary, on Calvary, Calvary. it was the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will Let's lift it together. Sing it, reach it. Give me strength. From day to day, it will never. It's bad. Come on, let's declare it all over the house. Say it, reaches. I dare you to lift your hands and say, It reaches to the highest mountain. I'm so very glad that it flows. broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ take and eat ye all of it the cup which represents the shed blood for without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sin take and drink ye all of it Father, we give you praise for this day. Oh God, we thank you for the word of God. Thank you, oh God, 
for the writing that's on the wall. Help us to follow the will of the Lord while we are yet in the land of the living. God, we pray that your presence would go with us, go before us, make streams in the desert, ways in the wilderness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and we ask it all. Let the people of God say, Amen. Come on, his blood will never lose his power. Never God bless you. All are encouraged to attend our weekly Bible studies, young adults on Mondays, churchwide on Wednesdays, men on Thursdays, and couples on Saturdays. All Bible studies are virtual and begin at 7 o'clock p.m. Visit the website for login and streaming details. Women's Season Virtual Bible Study with Reverend Lane continues tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m. The book of study is Overcoming Fear, Worry, and Anxiety, authored by Elise Fitzpatrick. Stream on the church website. The Communications Archival Committee is seeking volunteers to help gather, sort, and organize photographs and digital media to be used for the upcoming legacy celebrations and across our digital platforms. Committee registration is open. You can register online. Ladies, join us for Women's Conference April 11th through the 13th at the Stamford Marriott in Stamford, Connecticut. In-person registration is full, but you can register to tune in virtually. Visit the website for more information and registration. Save the date for Ignite Youth Summer Camp Retreat 2024, June 30th to July 5th at Camp Orchard Hill in Dallas, Pennsylvania. All parents and guardians of youth ages 9 through 17 are invited to join us for a virtual interest meeting Wednesday, April 10th or Monday, April 15th at 7 o'clock p.m. On Tuesday, April 23rd, the Cancer Support Ministry will have a free mammogram screening bus in the church parking lot from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Contact the church office to register. The Security Ministry is hosting a scholarship brunch Saturday, May 4th at 1230 p.m. in the Cathedral Banquet Hall. Join us as we honor our very own pastor, Reverend Elaine Flake. Tickets may be purchased online. Save the date for the Legacy Luncheon, Saturday, May 18th at Floral Terrace at 12 o'clock p.m. Tickets are on sale now in person and online. The Flake Legacy Weekend will take place Friday, May 31st to Sunday, June 2nd. Join us for an exciting weekend of nostalgic gatherings and sharing and creating fond memories with cherished friends and family as we honor and celebrate the enduring impact of the Flake Legacy on our lives. Friday night, various ministries will celebrate in their own special way. Then on Saturday, we will host a Legacy Community Day, starting with prayer at 10 a.m., followed by special celebrations in parking lot two. The weekend will culminate on Sunday with guest preacher Bishop Jacqueline McCullough. For more information regarding our virtual, hybrid, and on-site events, please visit our website at www.allencathedral.org. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We invite you to stay connected with us on our website at allencathedral.org and across our social platforms, including our YouTube channel, Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter accounts. Give tithes and offerings on our website and mobile app, which can be downloaded from the iTunes Store and Google Play. Visit our website and listen to our daily prayers, watch Bible studies, see featured videos, and more on our mobile app and the church website. Subscribe to receive our weekly digital event calendar and text alerts by going to the church website at allencathedral.org and follow the prompts to subscribe. You are invited to join us on our live prayer line weeknights at 8 p.m. to 8.20 p.m. and Saturdays at 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. where you will hear from Pastor Elaine Flake and friends. The dial-in details are available on our website. Again, we are so grateful for the opportunity to worship with you today. Our church doors are open. We would love to worship with you in person Sundays at 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. There is a seat for you, so join us. We continue to keep your safety and health in mind. 
So stay connected throughout the week and we look forward to worshiping with you again next week. To God be the glory.